Well, hello, Bill here, Detroit Commercial Photo and Video, and today we are talking about the equipment to do the job, but I got thinking about it since I posted that. Man, that's near to impossible to cover in a 10, 15 minute section. So we're gonna, it's gonna be just covering the very basics is what's gonna cover today. That's it. So if you like what you see here, please hit the like, go for it, okay? If you have a question as we're running through this, please feel free to shoot away. And if I don't get the question answered right now, today, I will definitely get back with you and we will get it answered. So let's start off with the basics. What are the basics? Big, big questions. Basics of doing the equipment, of doing the job is varies a ton. Depends on what we're, what we're photographing. In the promotion that I put down on Facebook, LinkedIn, what have you, I showed this picture. And then after I showed that picture in there, I thought to myself, my God, that's so varied. I could spend hours talking about the differences and how each one of these photos were were set up and created and, uh, and, and done without even getting anything further than that. So I thought, wow, I can't do that, that's, that's crazy. So let's talk about what a basic photographer equipment wise will be. What do y'all have? First of all, it's not just a cell phone. Yes, I have cell phones and they're nothing but a pain in the butt as far as either photo photography or video, they, they, they work but you've got no control over them. They do as they, they want to do. Everything is 100% automatic once you push the button. You got no controls on it. So no professional photographers generally don't do this. I mean, think about it for a minute. Would you want to hire someone to do a job for you? Pay them uh, any place from, uh, we'll say basic, uh, basic uh, 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 event type of work as much as 150 an hour, three hour minimum, and then him to show up with nothing but a cell phone, you'd really be upset to say that you feel you really get ripped off, and re rightfully so, because it just doesn't work. So equipment wise, let's talk about it. First question that we see and I hear all the time, and if you sit home for a week and watch these various judge shows on TV, You'll find someone suing somebody, suing some photographer, because they came out to do the job and they had one camera. And for whatever reason, the camera quits, dies, breaks, who cares what, somebody drops it, whatever it may be, they're done. The event's done. They don't have a backup. So the first rule in hiring a photographer, if make sure he has the equipment, and that is you want to make sure he is coming out to your event, your shoot, carrying at least two cameras. Recently, I did an event and I had a camera for myself. I had an assistant shooting with a camera and I had a third camera there just in case something went wrong with either one of those two that we'd have a, have a backups. So currently I am shooting with three of these. I'm shooting with two different video cameras and I, ha and I have another camera I can use as well if, if should I need to for the still photography. Today the big mantra that you'll see a lot if you're going through the ads is I am a natural light photographer. And what a natural light photographer basically means is it's someone that does not know how to use flash equipment. They're either they don't know, they're not experienced, they haven't done it. So it becomes another problem in itself. So the most they'll have is their camera and a reflector to bounce light back kind of thing. And they depend upon the positioning of the people, which can work to a point, but it's got its limitations as well. So most pros will in fact use lighting of some type. Lighting in fact can be something as basic as this right here. This is called a speed light. And while they are very nice and very usable, and I use them a lot, especially on, on corporate event kind of things, they can get quite pricey real quickly. Uh, this particular one was like $600, and I have two more just like this, uh, three more just like this, excuse me, and a whole bunch of other ones that date way back 25, 30 years. So in total, I got about seven of these. So if one died, I've got plenty of backup 
and, and doing a job. And that's what I keep, I keep going back to. And I want to re remind you, when you're hiring your photographer to do the job, what kind of equipment does he have? How much equipment is he going to bring with him? What if something breaks and dies? Now, why do I keep harping on that? Because I started 35 years ago. Everything was solid, it was metal, it was steel, okay? You couldn't hardly break it with, you know, if your life depended on it, okay? I mean, you know, you could hammer a nail with it, okay? It was all that solid, it was all that quality and caliber. You know, literally, I have dropped those cameras and with no effect back in the day kind of thing. Today, these are all plastic. You drop them, something breaks, cracks, it's just so easy and you're screwed. That's a smaller one. We then use quite frequently for some jobs, such as like in doing headshots and for a lot of different product type of things, food, we'll use flashes of this nature, which is, you can just readily see how much bigger this is. Now, this is an old flash. This, this sucker is probably 25, 30 years old, and I've got six of them just like it, okay? Um, made by Allen Chrome. This is all 100% metal kind of thing. And the only part of it that's, that's an offshoot of plastic is the very edges, and that, that's about it. Everything else is metal on it, okay? This also has something that the others doesn't have, and that's what's called a modeling light. That means a light bulb will light up so we can see how the light is hitting someone. To a professional photographer, that's super important. And there's two things that makes up a professional photographer, and that is the camera and the lighting. Your cell phone gives you the camera. Yes, it's got a little flash, but it flashes straight this way. Any pro will have his flashes coming from all different directions, so these just don't work. Now, in order to have your lighting come from all these different directions, you got another issue, and that is grip equipment. And that grip equipment can vary a ton. This is a, a smaller little Stand I've had for quite a few years now. This is 100% metal as well. Even the little handle grips are, are metal. Try to find one of them today. <laughs> They're all plastic, okay? So, uh, but this is even all metal. Uh, I've got uh, four of these, four of these bad boys, okay? Uh, up, I've got three smaller ones in this. I've got five bigger ones in this. And I've got three that are super big, solid steel, heavy duty type things, okay? So you need your photographer to have the equipment to do the job. So I keep coming back to that. And that just gives you a little hint of an idea. So the takeaway for the day is when you're hiring your photographer to do your job, whether it be your food project, whether it be your product photography project, whether it be your, your project for an event, for a corporate event of some kind, the first question you should be asking is not whether you can do it or how much it is. One of the first questions you should be is simply how much and what kind of equipment do you have? Can he do the job? What happens if something breaks, dies, or quits? In the form of electronics, you shouldn't need me to tell you about electronics. It quits automatically like that. No, 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 no given reason. It just dies. So you want to make sure that that fellow has plenty of equipment with him so that when he comes out to do the job, everything is going to work just the way that you intended and anticipated it to be. Okay? So that's what I say when I'm talking about equipment to do the job. It's all designed in order to help you do the job, get the job done, and be able to be happy with the project that you've uh, that you've assigned to somebody to do. So basically that's the post for today. Uh, next week, excuse me a second, we're going to have another Facebook Live post next Friday, and that is going to be the basics of a camera, or why not use my cell, which I kind of touched on today, but we're going to get into it in a whole lot more detail, some of the advantages of using a real camera, how a real camera works, why you'd want to use a real camera instead of your cell phone. So we're going to talk a lot about that. That'll be next Friday, and that'll be right at 1 o'clock as well. So we're about 10 minutes into it today, and I like to keep these between 10 and 15 minutes. If you have a comment, please feel free to, to shoot away, and I'll get back as soon as I can kind of thing. 
Uh, look forward for the rebroadcast because we will be doing a rebroadcast. We will get it back. We'll rebroadcast it in, in uh, several different ways so that you'll have plenty of options uh, in, in doing that. So once again, I'm Bill. This is Detroit Commercial Photo and Video. Every Friday we have one of these and it's a little series that we're running and the name of the series is The Value of Hiring a Professional Photographer, okay? And so that's what the series is all about and that's what each one of these little segments is, is touching base there with, you know, on as well. So you're here, if the first time you've been here, go ahead and like the page if you would and we'll, we'll see. We look forward to the getting an announcement every week for our next post kind of thing as well, okay? Thanks. Have a great day. Bye now.